moving on to ball sliding then, as that will be the final kind of movement that we really need to get in. We're going to have all of our jumping, all of our uh, kind of vertical and horizontal movement implemented at that stage. And we can finish off the animation a little bit later when we're tracking whether or not we are attached to a wall. So we can close this for now. The same for the montage, we won't need that any longer. What we can do is this will be back in the default event graph, and this will be run from the event tick. We basically want to do a couple of checks. The first one is going to be finding out if we are currently falling, so we can do that straight away. And we only really want to be checking for walls if we're not on the ground. So we can just add in the is falling. We'll make this a positive check. So if we are currently falling, then we want to potentially wall slide. To do this, we need to know some information about the environments around us. Uh, specifically, is there a wall? So we're going to do a capsule trace, and we'll do this by channel. The capsule trace is basically going to just be a capsule around our character, and we can use this with the out hit information to get some details about the way that the wall is facing, which way we should be facing, and things like that. First of all, we need to create our capsule. So this is going to be the start and end location is basically just going to be our location. So wherever we are, we want to trace around ourselves. Then the radius and the half height will be essentially our own capsule radius and half height. And I think now would be a good time to just double check that this is fitting correctly. And again, I apologize for the, uh, the glare here. Do not get a 2080. The cards are a mess. So what we want to do is double check that this is fitting around the character correctly. I think we might ignore a little bit of the head. I'm going to see if closing this and opening it will kind of correct this. This happens in games. It's not just Unreal Engine 5. Uh, my system is a complete mess. What we want to do is we're going to get the capsule radius. I think we can turn this down to 26-ish or 25. Turn this down to 25 because we want this to be just around the player's body. We can ignore the head. I'm going to allow for this to go through the wall. And the half height is a little bit too big. We don't need all of that extra above the head. So we'll turn this down to 70. And it's hard to see, but I think he's now just above or just below the capsule's bottom. So that's more fitting. Now we need that to be correct because the next step is we want the radius to be the radius we've just set plus one. We just want this to be slightly bigger than our own capsule. And the half height can be the same. So we'll trace to the same height as the capsule of our character. We can see what this looks like by turning on the draw debug type for one frame. So because we're doing this on the event tick, that will only exist for one frame, but it's going to look pretty much persistent for as long as we're in the air. So we can see what we want to do is when we run into these walls, we want this to be green, which means that would have found a successful wall trace. And when it's red, that means we're in the air and we're not finding anything to trace against. So we can see the start of this is indeed working. Two things we want to do. We're going to split the structure pin just here. So we'll split this and we'll use this information a little bit later. The very first and basic thing we want is from the hit blocking. We're going to do a branch check from here. And what we want to find out is whether or not we're currently blocking something whilst we're in the air. If we are, we're going to simply class this as a wall hit. So we'll promote a Boolean or create a Boolean here. Call this one B in wall slide. This is going to be important for our animations. We'll need to track this a little bit later. And we're just going to set this. Uh, in fact, what we could do is we can set this just here. So based on this value being returned, rather than doing a branch and setting it twice, we can just set it once here. And that will work perfectly. We still need this information though, because for as long as we are in the wall slide, we still want this branch as what we want to do is we're going to, the way this is usually done at least, is we're going to manipulate temporarily the gravity of the character movement. So we'll get this and we will set the gravity value. So set the gravity scale. And if this is true, so if we are wall sliding, then we can make this something like half of what it is, which is 0.5. I think it defaults to one. And then if this isn't true, we're going to set this back to one. So the gravity returns to normal. So this will at least look a little bit different. And you can see that feels a little bit more floaty for as long as we're on the wall. And then when we leave, we get that normal wall speed. Now it's not very obvious because we haven't done the movement improvement pass and the gravity is still, to be fair, a little bit too low anyway. 
So to get any real kind of feeling of difference here, we might want to put this down to something really low like 0.1. And then you can see this is definitely lowered the uh, the gravity. So the idea would be that whilst you're still attached, that would keep you going down the wall much, much more slowly. Now the problem is that there's no accounting for the vertical velocity, which means we can float up. So we want to cap that too. But we also want to do a few other things. So one of the first things we can do now that we have this value being tracked, again, very simple implementation. We will be coming back and fixing this. But we want to visually represent this with another animation state. So if we go back into the animation blueprint, we'll go back into our locomotion and from the jumping loop, as we're probably only going to enter this from jumping, in fact, we might enter it immediately if we jump straight onto all. So we'll do this from both of these. So we'll pull a wire from here. We'll add a new state called wall slide. And we'll plug this in. We can just plug another one straight into that state. And we're also going to want to allow this Whilst we're in a wall slide, we might detach ourselves. So we might go back in to a jumping state. That means we're going to need to account for these three. So the simple thing is the thing that we're going to play is quite simply the wall slide. Now, what we want to do, it will say here that this, uh, these th three states haven't been accounted for. We don't have the value tracked at the moment. So we can control W, our player reference again. And we can now get and promote that new variable that we've made, which is wall slide. So the Boolean we, we are now kind of uh, tracking on the event tick. We'll promote this to a variable, call it B in wall slide. And this is what we'll use in just a moment. So in the locomotion again, back in here, we're going to go into our locomotion graph. This and this will be the same. It should be quite obvious what these will be. So the condition is quite simply whether or not we're now tracking if we are in a wall slide. Uh, if we are, then we want to play that animation. So we're just control dragging these in. And in a similar way, uh, quite obvious again, but this is going to be if we're not in a wall slide, then we're going to return to jumping. We might find after some play testing, we might find we also want to do a check to maybe idle run. We might end that on the floor, but because this goes back into end jump, that should account for it anyway. So I think this will be fine. And we also want to make sure that this animation is looping because we might want this to loop for as long as we stay attached to a wall. So we now should have some visuals happening. Again, this is probably not going to play the right way. Oh, it does. Okay. So we can now at least see when we're in a wall slide. So this again, visually makes more sense. Uh, the wall slide implementation isn't finished. We definitely don't want it to slide up the wall forever but the the basic kind of loop of checking for that and then representing that back out to the player is at least very very simple to get across in this base logic hopefully you've enjoyed that content and just a reminder if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course it's already fully available and uploaded over on skillshare and providing links in the description down below which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial you'll gain full access to all of the courses over on skillshare including this 3d platformer focused controller topic so be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.